I want you to remember these numbers I'm getting ready to pop up here on the screen. 20, 43, 18, 5, 84, 45, 21, and 4. And I want you to remember it in that order and you can't write it down. And I want you to go ahead and repeat those numbers back to me. Go ahead and do it in the comments if you can remember. What up, y'all? So Apple on the other day, y'all, they released the updated or brand new chips, right, that they call in the M1 Pro as well as the M1 Max with the new MacBook Pro as well. Now, if you're somebody that's like me and you're trying to figure out which one of these bad boys right here is the right option for you? Then I'm gonna go ahead and break it all the way down the difference between the M1 Pro as well as the M1 Max in a way that's like fully understandable and just not so crazy technical. And then I'm gonna let y'all in on which one that I decided to buy and why. Let's go ahead and start off with the basics, right? Apple has done something, y'all, that literally no other company has done on a pro level laptop before. Whether we're talking about the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, it combines, right, the CPU, which is a central processing unit, or the brain, right? Let's think of it like the brain, which basically handles all the math, the logic, the basic controlling elements of basically what happens when you guys are using a laptop to process all of that data into your computer. Then there's the GPU, right? Or the graphics processing unit, which is used in a lot of the applications on your machine. But one thing that it actually helps with things like graphic and then video rendering, like what I'm shooting right now. Then there's the IO ports, which is just like your inputs and your output. Think of it as like the computing to be able to handle your inputs when you plug in something like a key keyboard or a mouse. Then there's the neural engine, right? This is basically Apple's way y'all of just handling a lot of the machine learning things that happen on your computer to help it basically run fast. So then you out on Apple's website and you see something called unified memory. So basically what that is, it's taking all of those components and putting it into one unified memory system on an SOC or system on a chip. So in the past, most computer manufacturers will include all of these same moving parts, but instead of it all being on one thing, it will be separated out into separate chips and they just basically would copy data back and forth between each one of them which could cause the cpu and gpu to stuff to slow down and just perform slower so now that y'all pretty much understand all of that and what you guys are buying let's go ahead and break down the chips so that way you should know which one to buy so let's talk about the m1 pro on these macbook pros before we get into the m1 max so starting with the unified memory you guys can get up to 32 gigabytes of memory with that chip so that basically means that how many gigabytes of information will your computer be able to handle at a given time think of it as like your brain right now let's say i walked up to you while you were listening to some music like your favorite song and you're cooking a meal and then i said to you i want you to remember these numbers i'm getting ready to pop up here on the screen 20 43 18 5 84 45 21 and 4 and i want you to remember it in that order and you can't write it down you can't stop cooking you can't stop listening to the music and then i'm going to return in one hour and i want you to go ahead and repeat those numbers back to me right now go ahead and do it in the comments if you can remember now this is what's called your ram of your machine and what it does is it lets you know how many tasks your computer can handle at one time and it stores it in that memory to process fast when you guys need it so the more storage or the more brain capacity that you have the more tasks your computer will be able to handle at one time like having multiple chrome browsers open for example while you guys are editing an entire video or you also have netflix running on another screen now if we talk about the m1 max it can handle double that up to 64 gigabytes of memory with that chip which is just insane now which one is actually right for you well honestly y'all that depends on what you guys do so my personal rule of thumb is you should never buy a machine in today's world that only has eight gigabytes of ram I feel like 16 gigabytes of ram should be your base level and especially how efficient these m1 chips are 16 gigs is more than enough for the average person or even a pro user like myself that edit 4k videos and likes to have multiple browsers open at the same time and this is something that i tested here on the channel with the m1 imac but i also will say if you guys can afford more unified memory or ram then by all means y'all go as high as your budget would allow because the more you guys buy the more you guys are also future proofing your purchase for the long haul as applications over time will become more power hungry from new as well as updated technology all right y'all so the next thing we got to talk about and that is what does the 10 core 16 core in the cpu and gpu means a core y'all is just as simple as like a unit within a cpu and gpu or even the neural engine that we talked about earlier that can just receive and instructions and information and perform a single task on your computer within the CPU, GPU, or the neural engines. That way, when you do something, it can be accessed and computed fast. So think about it. The more cores you have on your machine, the more single tasks that your computer will be able to handle. Simple, right? See y'all, this stuff ain't as complicated as it may seem. So for the most part, eight cores are fine for the CPU, but just like I said, with the RAM, if you guys can afford more cores, then get more cores because again, the more cores you have, the more single tasks your computer will be able to process in terms of 
of the CPU, it will be able to compute more math, logic, and even more of those advanced controlling elements that we talked about earlier. With the GPU, the cores will be able to process the data that's fed in and out of the GPU for like better gaming graphics, video and photo rendering processing. So the more cores you have, the more tasks it will be able to handle and process, giving you guys a much faster experience on your MacBook Pro. So when it comes down to which CPU core and GPU cores you should purchase and look at, look at it y'all from this angle. Eight cores will definitely do the job, but 10 I feel is also a nice bump when it comes to the CPU. And for the GPU y'all, I feel like it all depends on your usage. So if you are a pro level user that does a lot of heavy graphical things like animation graphics, 4K to 8K video editing, deep level color grading, uh, like high High intense gaming and all of that and you need that performance then I would say at least look at 16 core GPU or higher which I feel like the 24 core is like the sweet spot but 16 y'all is a great baseline for cores on a GPU so another thing you got to think about when it comes to your MacBook Pro is how will you guys be using this machine are you gonna use it as a mobile machine or will you be docking it at home and outputting it to like external displays so when it comes to these chips the M1 Pro will support up to two external displays while the M1 Max will support up to four external displays now for the most part people two displays is just more than enough as it's literally what I'm running right behind me with my M1 Mac mini so I know it's overkill but I actually wouldn't mind adding like a third one to this display behind me in this whole setup you know you know just, you know, don't be surprised if you see an extra monitor pop up back here. Just understand what you guys need for the right chip with the workflow because if you buy the M1 Pro version instead of the M1 Max version, you might actually regret it later because your workflow in the future requires more displays. Get what I mean? And the last thing before I actually tell y'all my personal configuration that I bought and will be actually keeping with my MacBook Pro, I wanna actually talk about how fast the internal SSD drive is for the read and write speeds. Now, Apple y'all is giving us a read and write speed of 7.4 gigabytes per second, which is just next level. So what that means is your brand new MacBook Pro can read or load up 7.4 gigabytes of data on your SSD in one second, which is just insane. And it can also write and save or replace 7.4 gigabytes in one second, y'all. This y'all is just unreal speeds and needed for those people out there like myself who are handling like large video and photo files literally on a daily basis. Now, is it necessary? No, but it is a nice to have. So at least having y'all one terabyte of storage should be the base these days on your machines if you guys order one. And you guys can get additional storage that you can have that small and compact to travel with over at the applenest.com. And I'll go ahead and include a link for that down in the description section below for basically what I'm talking about and what I recommend. So the setup that I personally bought y'all that I will be having on this channel is right up here on the screen, which I went with the M1 Max. Just feel free, pause this video, write it down, do whatever you got to do, screenshot it. But for my needs, this checks a lot of the boxes from a lot of the issues that I had with my current Intel 2015 MacBook Pro that I got right here in my hands. Then I also bought the 16 inch M1 Mac Pro bare base model configuration to see if it can actually handle everything that I use my machine for and basically put it head to head with the M1 Max machine. Which one will y'all be picking up, man? Whichever one you pick, just make sure it is the right one for you. Hope this video helped y'all make a decision on which one to actually buy. If it did, hit that like button and uh, y'all already know. Comment down below, let me know. What's up? <laughs> Peace, squad. Open, it's time to explore. I'm knocking down all of these doors. I say, I say, I say.